Welcome to the Real Film Nerds Podcast. Merry Apocalypse, everyone, and welcome to another incredible episode of the Real Film Nerds Podcast. My name is Matt Hinshaw, trying to keep a positive attitude because I'm always negative even when it is not the apocalypse. You can follow us on the socials. I'm just going to get that out of the way right now. At Real Film Nerds everywhere. We have a Facebook group. We have an Instagram. So we have a Twitters. I don't really check the Twitters. Mostly do the Instagrams and the Facebooks or the Facebook groups. Check it out. It's fun. You can bullshit. Talk about movies and how horrible they are. But anyways, enough about me and our wonderful Real Film Nerds podcast. Let's get to our incredible co-host on the other side of the USA, Mysterious Mike Talent. Hey, Matt. Uh, thanks for welcoming me on on another day in the apocalypse. Uh, y- you know, I have a, a important question, Matt. How long do you think people's hair is going to get with the, uh, you know, everything shut down? Like, we can't get haircuts over in our neck of the woods. Can you, are, are, are barbershops open uh, in your neck of the woods? They were until two days ago. And then Governor Doug Ducey, after already putting out a list of essential businesses was i don't want to say like lambasted but that's basically what it was by the media that he did not include stuff like you know beauty salons and barber shops and things like that and everybody's like why is he not doing i mean you're like on top of each other and stuff and so uh on april 5th he uh disbanded all those and said they are no longer essential and they should not go into work so I didn't know that they were still operating or else I would have gone and gotten my fro cut because as Mike already pointed out, and you can actually watch an online video with my fro for my work that I put together on Zoom meetings, and I try and get it really puffy for my Zoom meetings, like really puffy. Like I put gel and like I dance it up, but I have a full on fro, man. It's, It's amazing. What little hair I have left is a fro. Awesome. Awesome. I know my hair is getting quite long. It's, uh, it's coming up on two months. Uh, I don't know how long it's going to go. Uh, I might end up being, uh, having long hair again, Matt, like in high school. I was going to say, are we going to get a rebirth of the JC? I don't know, man. That'd be weird. That would be amazing. Although it took you years to grow it that long though. It did. It, t- <laughs> it did take, it took years, literally years. But Matt, I guess we should get on to the topic. I'm going to ask you, what does a tack and a snot rag have in common? A tack and a snot rag have in common. Other than that they're in the film that we are reviewing today? Oh, yes, yes. They're, uh, they're characters in our new movie, our new awesome movie called The Stoned Age. Well, I don't know if I would call it a new movie. It's a new review. It's a movie that both of us saw. Probably, I was trying to figure out if it was high school or if it was college. It came out in 94, but I'm pretty sure we picked it up at Hastings. So I think it was probably high school. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking it was like um, high school, which would be like 96, 97 time frame. And uh, it was probably a 49 cent rental. Matt, remember that? 49 cents for a week to rent a movie. I miss those days. That was amazing. Forty nine cents for a a whole week. Was it a week or was it like four days? It was like a. It was something. I think ridiculous, it was a week. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure it was a week. Yeah, it was amazing. Loved. I miss Hastings so bad. We had one here in Prescott until not too long ago. Now they bulldozed it, and now it's a giant Circle K, like a giant Circle K. Dude, that's one really big Circle K, man. Like, what do they do? Do they have like? Um mouth hug machines or something in there like what's going on well it's right next to the hospital so they're setting up coronavirus uh shelters in the parking lot of the circle k so you can run in get yourself a slurpee come back out get you know on your uh uh ventilator and go about your business oh uh, i i i heard um the slurpees kill the virus that's what i heard uh it was you know it's very common knowledge yeah dude get a bottle of corona pour it in a slurpee and it kills the rona yeah. See, I know. I know, man. I know. Well, I had a, I was going to say uh if we keep going like this and we can't get our haircuts, our hair is going to be like the two main characters in the Stone Age. Yeah, oh, you you're right. You're right. Um I might have to dye mine a little reddish. Yeah. Well, oh, so you're Joe and I'm Hubs. So I'm the mean one? Uh yeah. 
but I do get the girl though, so I'm cool with that. That's all right. Yeah, man. What's crazy too though is like this is supposed to take place in the 70s and they definitely are dressed more punk slash metal than like rockers from the 70s, if you ask me. I mean, they have like flannels and leather jackets and chains and. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So, anyways, all right, Mike. Well, um, before we start rolling too much into the Stone Age, why don't you give us the rundown for it? All right, Matt. So, this was uh, directed by James Melikan and written by James Melikan and Rich Wilkies. Uh, it's starring Michael Coplo, Bradford Tatum, China Katner, Renee Alleman, and Clifton Collins Jr. And this movie, oh Matt, I, I wrote I wrote a, a summary again. Oh yes, I haven't done yes. it. I haven't done it in yes. a while. All Back right. to form, Mike. I love it. Yeah. So uh, two guys who want to get stoned, trying to lay some pipe with some chicks, but but no fat chicks, as one of the characters so eloquently puts on his T-shirt he's wearing. So that's really what this movie's about. Just two guys trying to lay some pipe, trying to get high and stoned and lay some pipe. Yeah. Yep. I like it. I like it, Mike. It was good. It was good. You forgot the irony, though, and when uh, Stacey and I were watching it the other day, because I, I forced her to ro- watch it, and she was not real happy about that, but um, <laughs> she nice. thought this movie was terrible, but uh, um, he, she was like, how ironic is it that the fat guy is wearing a shirt that says no fat chicks? Ah, oh, that is that is pretty funny. Yeah, I was um, like, that's probably on purpose, so... Yeah, I mean, I guess I should have put trying to kill some talls because they, they're all obsessed with this this beer. Of course, it's like something called Ox. I don't even know if it's real, but like Ox Forty Five. This... No, it is not a real beer. They made it up. Yeah, yeah, but there's just these talls everywhere, and there's a there's a scene in the movie that's very funny that <laughs> that's uh, very explicitly tells you that they want the talls when they're robbing the liquor store. Yeah, yeah. You can say it. We can spoil this. I mean, come on. This movie's really old. (laughs) All right. So it is really old. 94. 1994. Um, Yeah. I was, I was, I was, uh, watching it and I don't know. I, I, I I still like it. I mean, it's, it's dumb. It's really dumb, but I, I think I, I still like it. It, Um, I don't know. Maybe because I remember what it was like when I watched it. When we were younger? I don't know. The nostalgia? I think nostalgia plays a factor for me as well. I didn't hate this movie. I like this movie. I still think it's okay. I just don't think it is as good as I remember it. Like, there's parts that I really just enjoy and think are hilarious, like the eyeball and, you know, their obsession with <laughs> Oyster oh, yeah. Cult, you know? I, I think that's pretty awesome. But um, parts of it are just kind of dumb, and I didn't realize how much, like, uh, womanizing is really kind of going on in it. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty ruthless, you know. How how uh, 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 Joe treats um, the hot blonde girl and how he like picks on her, abuses her, and like dunks her head and all kinds of shit. Oh yeah, no, it's uh, it's it's definitely, I don't know. And like even the the whole the whole movie, most of the male characters are trying to worm out chicks from other characters like the whole the whole movie like that's everyone's only like goal is to just get chicks lay some pipe Um, yeah and i think that's just them a spoof and trying to be like dazed and confused in a way in this film because this came out around when dazed and confused it came out i think dazed and confused is a couple of years older but um you know it's kind of a homage to that and everything but that's uh one thing that's interesting mike i wanted to bring up uh, about the chicks is they're in Southern California, Torrance specifically. There should be young women everywhere, and there aren't. There are like no women like anywhere. It's just all dudes. There's some at that party, but they don't talk to really any of them. And then there's the Buffalo chicks, which was <laughs> that's pretty jacked up to call them <laughs> Buffalo chicks, but you know, it's what it yeah, is. Yeah, it it's is definitely it not is. PC, you know. <laughs> But there's no chicks around, and everyone, like, 30 guys are trying to get with these two girls. I just don't – I don't understand that. It's Southern California. There's people freaking everywhere. There's gorgeous women everywhere. Yeah. I I don't know. For whatever reason, they just showed that. Um, I, I did like how they, they made fun of schnapps all the time in this movie. It's kind of like a running joke. Yeah, the the peppermint schnapps, the schnapster, and it's like a jug. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> literally a jug. 
Oh, God. So nasty. Ugh. All right, Mike. Well, um, should we proceed? Do you want to ask? Uh... Yes. Yes, I, I, I do want to ask you a question, Matt. Um, what are you drinking on this day of the apocalypse? Are, have we? Uh, last time you were drinking some nice stuff. What do you got this time? <sighs> Dude, I love my Buffalo Trace, man. That that uh, uh, bourbon cream. That's great. I need to get a bottle of Buffalo Trace, but I didn't get it. I went cheap because I'm broke and I don't know. I still have my job, thank God. But who knows? I'm shooting shooting lots of houses, so I picked up a six pack of a vanilla porter from Breckenridge Brewery out of. Colorado. Colorado, yeah. I, I was going to say, it says fine From Colorado ales. I thought it had the town on there, but I don't see it. I think it's from the actual town of Breckenridge as well. Oh, it says Littleton, Colorado on the side of the bottle is where it's registered, but it also says Fort Collins, Colorado, so that might just be something else. I don't know. Maybe that's where they're registered or something. But anyways, it's a, it's a quite delightful beer. I have not had it before. I've had many porters, but I have not had vanilla porter, so... Not bad at all. Mike, what IPA are you drinking? Oh, man, I am back to an IPA. I am drinking um, quite a good one from uh, our friends at Sierra Nevada. It's uh, it's called Hop Bullet. It, uh, it's uh, a bullet of hops to your face. Yeah, I actually have heard of that IPA. Yeah, the Sierra Nevada. It's like taking a bullet of hops in the mouth. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Uh, it is <laughs> you make it sound so dirty, Matt. Uh, it is a double IPA. Hey, you know, I it's only because I made a ringtone out of that one comment you made during the Poindexter Awards, and I sent it over to my buddy Steve, and it's his text message ringer whenever like someone texts him of you and me talking, and I, you know, his favorite thing is when I say Jesus, Mike. And that's part of it, but it was something of a shot in the mouth or something. I don't know. I don't remember. So you can't say I'm the 100% dirty one. You have your fair share too, sir. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, I think mine are a little subtle or or something. Subtle or? Uh, fine. Maybe I'm just more outspoken. I don't know, Mike. I'm sorry. Yeah. Maybe that's what it is. I'm just I'm just a raunchy, horrible person. I didn't say that yet that's the key word is yet all right mike so should i ask the most important question of the entire podcast way more important than what ipa you're always drinking mike how does 1994's the stoned age relate to the marvel cinematic universe Well, Matt, thanks for asking on this uh, interesting spring apocalypse day. I was uh, quite worried that I wasn't going to find anybody for this because it's, you know, it's a smaller movie, lower budget movie uh, from the 90s. But uh, lo and behold, uh, when you have 22 movies on on the books, there's quite a few people involved in making them. Uh, Easton Smith is the art director on Stoned Age. Also worked on Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 as a set designer. Nice. I was thinking, I was trying to think maybe like Jake Busey was in something, you know, MCU, like maybe a background character or something, because he's, a, out of all the people that are in this cast, he's one of the bigger names. Um, the two main characters, they really haven't had much of a career since this movie, like whatsoever. No, the um, the, the character who's played Tack, uh, Clifton Collins Jr., he's in quite a few movies, but uh, I didn't see anything for uh, MCU. Yeah, Tack is in, like, the dude that plays Tack is in, like, everything. He's, like, a side character in, like, everything, but he's not one of the two main guys. I would say he's probably third, fourth behind the girls. You know, it's probably the two guys, the two girls, and then Tack for the stars. And yeah, uh, Clifton Collins Jr., he is in a ton of stuff. He's probably been the most successful out of any of the actors in this film. Yeah, for sure. That's that's what I was thinking. So anyways. All right, Mike. Well, um, does the blue 
torpedo remind you of uh, the station weapon at all? Uh, a little bit. A little bit. What'd you think of that picture I found the other day? Oh, dude, that's that's classic. That was amazing, and that's a legit like print. You remember I even printed it out in class. It's a color print. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Oh, I love that. <laughs> I I had to include mags on that. I had to be like, this was back when Mike was still a professional male model. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she she got a kick at it. She still can't believe what I look like in high school. <laughs> Dude, I got I got plenty more because that was one of the things being uh, both photography students. I don't know if you took a lot of pictures of me, but I took a lot of pictures of you and friends and girlfriends and things like that like that's one when i was going through that stack like half of them was uh of um said ex-girlfriend from high school i mean like half of them the one whose name we do not speak yeah she whose name we do not speak okay yeah no er, her name is nicole and i've not talked to her since probably halfway through college haven't seen her don't really care i don't know I got you, man. I I don't know, not to get too off topic, but that's one thing that's kind of weird, Mike, is how um, when it comes to ex-girlfriends, I know some people can continue talking to their exes. I've never, ever been able to remain friends with any of my ex-girlfriends, and I don't know what that is. It, maybe it's just how I was brought up. I don't know. Uh, Yeah, maybe that's what it is. I don't know. Um, I've lost contact with my uh, high school uh, ex-girlfriend. Um. Uh, I probably could find her now. Like, I feel like with Facebook and the socials, it's easier to find people, but, um, I'm not really looking, you know, but that's the like, thing. Would you really want to, but I mean, I'm even talking like ex-girlfriends that I've dated that are still living in Prescott. Now I don't really talk or hang out with them or am friends with them. And I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm just a weirdo or I don't know. I don't know. Uh, you know, Email us, uh, Mike at realfilmnerds.com, and let us know uh, what do you do about your uh, ex girlfriends or ex wives or ex boyfriends or whatever. Uh, along with uh, the um, shitty selfies. That's uh, Mike at Real Film <laughs> <Yeah>. Nerds. <laughs> yes, thank you. I still think that is hilarious how Steve started sending you them. <laughs> he did. <laughs> oh, Real Film Nerds podcast. Super fan Steve Stockmar. Shout out. He literally is not leaving his house. I don't know how he is surviving without baseball. Oh, dude, Matt, speaking of baseball, random, random. Did you see the MLB thing today? They're going to have all the teams play all the games in Arizona? Uh, That was yesterday, and they've been talking about it actually for a few weeks. They're not sure if they're actually going to do it or not. But yeah, they're going to have all 30 teams play at their spring training facilities with no fans. And the bad thing, though, is if they... I didn't even realize that Steve brought it to my attention today because it was this is exciting for both of us. I mean, we get baseball back, and I'm thinking, well, 30 teams, so they might need a still photographer. Give me a call. I'll shoot a game. I'm down. I'll shoot many games. But um, think about it. If they start playing in May, they're going to be hitting the stride of their seasons in Phoenix in July and August. Are they outdoor venues? The spring training ones, 90 90- no, I think 100% of the spring training ones are outside. Oh. Well, Matt, you know, they should stimulate uh, those out-of-work photographers. I'm okay with it. I, you know, I lost, I'm not out of work, but I lost a couple of sports jobs over it. So I, I would gladly go and shoot baseball. But I was thinking, they're not going to have fans there anyways, so why not play them at night and play them at like start at like ten o'clock at night or eleven o'clock or three in the morning or whatever, and play throughout the night and then air them the next day. That would be a solution. That would be a solution for the heat. Um, I mean, but it's still hot in Phoenix. Depending on where they're at in Phoenix, like you know how sometimes it doesn't really cool down. Right, and so instead of it being like one hundred and fifteen, it'd be only like a hundred, which is better. Still not great. Right. It's it's better, but it's still not great. Yeah, um, I guess a long time ago, when I was very young, my dad played an intramural um, baseball, and uh, it was in a very hot place, so they played in the middle of the night. Yeah, no, it's uh, here in Prescott, granted, we don't get super, super hot in the summer, but here in Prescott, they do a lot of the intramural recreation softball at night. Like They don't start until the sun goes down. And they'll play until, you know, midnight, one, two o'clock during weekday games. So I've gone and done that a few times. 
Wow. So, all right, Mike. Well, I I will steer us back on on topic. So, uh, Stone Age, Ox Forty Five. Yeah, no, I uh, I enjoyed this movie. Just watching it, the the talls, the the, the we guess talls, go back in. Uh, I wish they really had talls, man. I wish they did. Um, I, I I don't know, like the the going into the pool and like sneaking into the neighbor's pool and stuff. Like it, it stuff was like, I don't know, just kind of reminded me of things we would do. Um, well, you know, we're we're past like. Well, I don't know. I don't know where the statute of limitations stands on a lot of stuff we did as high school kids. So, yes, we'll leave it at things we would possibly do, like go into other people's pools and or hot tubs without them knowing. Things like that. Things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so um, like, that stuff uh, reminded me, like... Um I don't know, uh, <laughs> just cruising around, uh, not much to do. Um, I, I don't know. I just, something about this movie I liked. I think I liked the music stuff. Oh, yeah, the music is great, man. Blue Oyster Cult, I mean, it kicks off with an Ozzy Osbourne song. You know, it, yeah. it's great. The music is really, really good in this. The, I think that's a big big reason that I like this movie so much. That the acting's kind of rough, but it is a lower tier movie. It's not horrible but it's not great either it's kind of in the middle some of it's clearly forced some of it's okay um the premise is all right it's it's a decent story it's nothing spectacular but uh it is what it is you know it it could have been better could have been worse the eyeball thing i think is absolutely hilarious i I remember we used to joke about that going to concerts after we saw this oh man i hope i get hit with one of the lasers i want to see the eyeball yeah (laughs) we sure did it was good times good times all right so mike what else do you want to talk about this movie um i don't know i i enjoyed watching this movie again uh i I did uh have to uh, i rented it because i wanted to see it in hd but uh you know it was it was good oh dude it was in hd when i watched it on voodoo for free it just had commercials every little bit. And there wasn't even that many commercials. It was like 30 seconds of commercials maybe every 30 minutes. Oh, okay. Well, that's okay, man. It's fine. It was just a few bucks. Yeah, it was, It was what, six bucks on Vudu, I think. Something like that. Oh, okay. Cool. Did you watch it on, what, your Apple TV? Apple fanboy? Yes, yes. Gotta, gotta give them some love, dude. They're hurting, man. I'm sure they're hurting so bad, Mike. So bad. I mean, they, they're only... I don't know if they're still the most profitable company in the world. I think Amazon's probably dominating that, especially right now. But they're damn close. They are damn close. I think it goes like Amazon and then Apple. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Um, uh, yeah, I, I think you're right. It, it, it's jostling between those two. But uh, Microsoft's up there, or they, they were. I don't know how everything's going. The stock market's nuts right now, so who knows? Yeah, I'm trying not to pay attention. I've lost a lot of money, and I just... It makes me angry because I can't afford to lose it, and I've lost a lot of it in my IRAs. And you know, I don't have a four hundred one k because we don't have them at my company. But I, so I have my own investments, and yeah, they've lost a significant amount. And I'm not super stoked about it. But again, I'm still fairly young, like yourself. So hopefully, I will gain it all back and then some over the next. I don't know. It'll probably take a hundred years for me to retire, something like that. Well, you know, I was thinking about it just the other day. I was like, well you know i'm saving my 401k to retire but luckily i won't be able to retire because i'm gonna have to be paying for this virus forever because we're gonna be the 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 amount of stimulus well we're gonna be paying for that forever i'm still holding out that everything turns into mad max and we're all wearing leather and chains and carrying around guns and driving around badass vehicles in a barren wasteland i think i would do well well, I mean, the gas is is a little too cheap for that right now. Yeah, I know. But, I mean, I think, you know, I don't think I could be like Mad Max or like humongous. I, I would love to think I would be humongous, but there's no way in hell. You know, I'm more of a Master Blaster kind of person. So I can see myself running around as Blaster with, you know, someone up on my shoulders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. So, all right, all right. Mike, we're trying to be positive. 
No more talking about the apocalypse. No more talking about the end of the world. No more talking about the virus. Okay. Let's just be positive. Stoned Age. I don't know why they call it the Stoned Age. They hardly ever smoke any weed in it. That was one I was going to bring up. Oh, yeah, you're right. They don't. Uh, they, they keep bringing up this uh, this Mexican dirt weed or skank weed, skank right? Weed. They're like, oh, yeah. I, yeah. yeah. Well, and that's what's funny is in high school, that's all we got. Like, I was I was talking with Stacy about that. I was like, that's all we got. Like, we did, if we got like something that was really good and decent, it was pretty rare and it was very expensive because the border was 20 minutes away. Like, it, the Mexican skank we just flowed, man. You could get like pounds of that shit anywhere. It was now it's probably a little bit more difficult, but yeah, it's probably more difficult yet the same. I bet it's, yeah, I bet it's different, but the same, different, but the same. All right, Mike. Well, anything else you want to add, or should I uh, ask you uh, the second most important question? No, no. Uh, I mean, there's a couple. There's a there's a couple. Um, I forget what it's called, Matt. When you, uh, there's like that scene in Jaws where there's like Brody's on the beach and the the camera like, it's like fade in, fade like, it's like zoom in, but ah, uh, what is it? Zoom in. It's that weird, like vertigo feeling. Like yeah, I forget. I, there's a um, what is that called? I I thought it was, um, because that was um, oh, see now I'm really drawing a blank. All this sleep is killing me. <laughs> I can't even think of the filmmaker that invented it. Um, uh, famous for all the horror movies. You remember? Um, Hitchcock. Alfred Hitchcock. Hitchcock. Yeah. Um, I think they just called it like the vertigo effect or something like that. I, I don't remember, but yeah, it's moving the camera while z- zooming in a certain way or zooming out a certain way. It's the opposite of whichever way the camera's going in it. Yeah. There's a lot, and there's gave, a, quite a bit of that. Yeah. There was that in this, uh, especially when the, the, um, <laughs> the Buffalo chick showed up and I thought it was really funny. Like they used it in kind of a, like a weird, funny way. Um, cause most of the time in movies, it's like a very serious moment. And in this, it was like a, a a very like oh no like funny kind of kind of way. Yeah, yeah. Well, and speaking of the buffalo chicks, I think that was pretty funny towards the end of the movie when they run into him again. I think they were at uh, the house with the girls or something. They showed up. I don't remember where they ran into him again, but there was instead of three of them, there was two. Yeah, <laughs> they were like, oh, we're just evening the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> we're just evening the odds evening i think the odds they said. Or whatever yeah they're they're they were they were clearly gunning for uh uh hubs and joe clearly yes 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 they were so all right joe since i'm hubs i'm the mean one with uh that but you know whatever it's fine it's fine i know i'm mean i'm, I'm the dick it's cool i understand I, I know where i belong i know where i stand so uh yeah man. joe aka Mysterious Mike Talent. How many reels? Uh, I'm going to give this one three reels out of five. Because I just, I don't know, the nostalgia factor. I, I like it. Well, Mike, we need to stop. This is now two weeks in a row. I also give it three out of five reels. No way, man. I thought you were going to rip it harder, man. Because you're like, eh. You, you, you told me, you're like, ah, it's not like what I remember. No, it's not. It's dumber and sillier and, you know, not as good. But it's, it's still that nostalgic factor. And it's still a decent movie. I mean, I'd watch it again. You know, I'm not going to tell people they need to run out and watch it. And that's what I said on the radio, you know, on Monday. I was telling them, you know, it's fun. It's interesting. But there's, there's better coming of age stories out there since this film. We got things like Superbad. Superbad is freaking incredible that's one of the best coming of age stories i've ever seen and then there's book smart book smart is another fantastic coming of age story so if i had to pick one of those you know i'd send them to something else other than the stone age but if you got the time it's worth it it's fun yeah well the, there's also american pie man i i was i was thinking we should do that at some point because i haven't seen it in a while but i still think i would like that movie just the same it's it's ridiculous came out when we were in high school well, you dude, know. that that movie to our generation specifically, our graduation year of high school is extremely specific and extremely nostalgic because that came out our senior year of high school. I mean, a lot of that shit that was in that movie, it was like our lives. You know, I not it was fun. It was a good movie, but for us it hits that special soft spot because the timing was just perfect. It really was. 
Yeah, that was that was such a fun movie for for uh, us to watch. Uh, I don't know. I I enjoyed that movie. Well, all right, Mike. Speaking of movies, what are we gonna watch for next week? Man, I was thinking about it. I don't know. Um, well, you were saying Onward, but I already reviewed Onward on the radio. I mean, we can do it in the pod. That's no big deal. We could do that. Yeah, there's there's new there's new movies that hit Netflix. Um, uh, there's like the Road Perdi- to Perdition is on oh, there. Oh, that uh, movie the Tom is Hanks. so good. I love that movie. I remember I bought that on DVD. I still have it. That would be a good one. Oh, that would be a real yeah. good one. Yeah. Uh, I don't I don't know. Um, there's like because it's April now or whatever. Uh, some stuff changed over on the streaming services. Uh, but that was a, a good one that I saw that was on there. That'd be kind of cool to watch again. Um, I haven't seen it in a while. I don't know, Matt. What what, what are you thinking? You thinking we do another one of these um, uh, requested ones? Or? Yeah, we could do a request. We could do a request. Um, you know, let's just uh, let's not worry about it right now because uh, we can spend like twenty minutes just talking about which one we're gonna do. Um, here, let me go. Let me pull up our list request because i can do it without touching my keyboard um let's see legacy list requests all right here we go here we go here are our current requests these are not yours or mine these are requests from listeners death of superman nell room public enemies bubba hotep the one predestination prisoners mall rats short circuit just one of the guys rudderless ice pirates Birdman, Chiller Rama, and Sweet Smell of Success. Anything anything hitting you there, Mike? I don't know, man. A lot of those movies I've seen, there's some on there that list I have not seen, so Ooh, I, I don't know. Like what? Like Chiller Rama? I don't think I've seen that. That's requested by my buddy Dave. It's a horrific, silly, horror comedy. I don't think it's supposed to be a comedy. It's uh when he requested it, it was streaming on Amazon. So we'll have to look into that. All right. All right. So yeah, let's look into let's look into the list, Matt, see if there's anything that catches our fancy. Uh I mean Bubba Hotep's a great movie. And that's one I've um, never I seen. I haven't seen it in a while. It's great. It's uh interesting. It's got uh Bruce Campbell and it. it's great. Yeah, well I love Bruce Campbell. He he's amazing. That's one that's on my list, on my personal list is Army of Darkness. Or Evil Dead, uh, one of the Evil Deads, or Army of Darkness, the originals, not the remakes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah gotta go to the originals. I, I, you know, I'm gonna probably get shot for this, but I think Army of Darkness was my favorite out of the, the three. You know, I just, <laughs> it was so silly, medieval times with a shotgun, and just, I loved it. Oh yeah, no, that that's, I think that's my favorite as well. Loved it. Anyways, all right, Mike. Well, and who knows? There has been some new drops on Netflix of new films that they've come out with. Uh, I saw a couple. There was a Western on there. I don't remember the name. That might be interesting. So we'll figure it out. We'll talk about it. Um, I already watched something that I'm going to probably talk about on the radio next week. Uh, It was a documentary on Hulu, and it's called Neat. It is the story of bourbon. Oh, nice! It is really, really good. I'm uh, I'm giving it way probably too many reels, but I it was really good because yes, it's a story about bourbon, but in the end, it's really a story about people, and I loved how they did that. Neat. Exactly. That's the name of the movie. <laughs> Goober. <laughs> Yeah, I I did watch a docu series, but it's a docu series. It's on Netflix, and it was like how to cover up. It's something to do with like drugs or something. It was fascinating. Um, it was it's about Massachusetts and some drug chemists, and uh, they had some problems and and basically how it them having some problems testing all the samples of drugs made like all these cases like invalid. Well, and Mike, who doesn't love drugs? Right. Yeah, but it's like there's only two like labs in the whole state of Massachusetts, one for east and one for west, and they were both messed up at the same time. Jeez. Ooh. For years. So you're not hopping on the bandwagon of watching Tiger King like everybody else. No, I haven't seen it, man. I haven't seen it. My significant other, I, I don't know. I, I'm interested in seeing it because I think I could handle it, but I think if if I did watch it, Maggie, I, I don't know. It's... 
I'm pretty sure it's going to so, show a bunch of stuff that's going to be terrible. And uh, um, being that I'm married to a, a uh, animal keeper, or, uh, she probably has some strong feelings about it. Well, um, I am on episode three of Tiger King because I just have to because everybody's talking about it. And I have to watch it without Stacy around because she said I can't watch it. It's going to make me very angry because she is 100% against people owning exotic animals as pets, which I understand. But she is also an animal person. She is not a uh, doesn't work in a zoo or a theme park or anything like that. She's a vet tech at our local uh, emergency vet clinic here. She's actually now the practice manager. She's the boss. So that's pretty, pretty cool for her. She just got a promotion. Yeah, that's, that's, that's real cool. Yeah, no, no, it's a lot of stress and I don't get to see her a whole lot because she's working like 80 hours a week because she's doing the, the admin stuff during the day and the vet tech stuff at night. And it's just, it's tough, man. Ooh. It's tough. It's tough. But she's hanging in there, and I told her, you know, do what you got to do. I'll, I'll survive. I'll be okay. Anyways, all right, Mike. Well, you got anything else for uh, today's wonderful pod? No, no. I think uh, everybody just uh, stay safe uh, and uh, keep your social distance or whatever you're supposed to be doing, depending on where you're listening from. Yeah, yeah. Uh, social distance. Uh, watch out for that Rona. It's brutal. Don't get people sick that you don't want to get sick. Or don't get anybody sick. I don't know. I don't know how the hell to say. Yeah, well, don't d- d- don't go out if you know you have the coronavirus. Well, yeah, of man, course. Been reading some crazy stories, man. Crazy stories. That's ridiculous. Stay home and drink. That's what I would do because I heard alcohol kills it. I heard that too. Perfect. Then, Mike, you and I, we should be immune because I'm at least twenty or thirty percent alcohol. <laughs> wow, wow, man. It's, I'm like I don't know if I'm that high. I'm like I'm like Bender from uh, Futurama. When I start sobering up, is when I get really drunk. <laughs> oh, nice! Because the alcohol nice. content is too low, I get lightheaded. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, all right, Mike, I'm done. I'll stop. I'll stop interrupting you. Okay. Well, I I think on that, uh, you know, hit us up on the socials, and uh, we'll catch you next week stay safe thank you for listening to the real film nerds now don't forget to follow us on facebook twitter and instagram at real film nerds now go out and catch a movie good morning magic 99.1 who's this good morning lisa oh my gosh is it really matt hinshaw from the real film nerds podcast Alive and well. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. You doing good there, Maddie? Yeah, the only problem is, is everybody thinks I have the, uh, what's the new slang for it? The Rona? Because <laughs> it's allergy season, and I have allergies really bad, so I'm sneezing and coughing and... Yeah. I hear you loud and clear. I was just saying that this morning, how I have allergies too, and you're just so scared to sneeze or cough because people will think you have the Rona. I didn't know we were calling it the Rona. Yeah, that's what all the cool kids are saying okay, now. Okay, I'm going to change it. I'm going to start saying that. Very good. What are, you, what are you doing to pass the time, Matt? Well, I because of the allergies, I like just like, like to go into the stores, especially grocery stores, and just stand over their produce no. and start sneezing and coughing. Stop it. It's just people just stay away from me. It's wonderful. Yeah. I, I've never had this much free time in my life. I actually think you could get arrested for doing <laughs> that right now. <laughs> yeah, actually, you probably could. You, or at least you get a nice stern talking to, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, I bet you've watched a couple movies this past week. Yes, ma'am, I did. I watched a couple, okay. and I'm going to talk about two. Let's hear it. Well, uh, I don't know if you got the memo or not, or if you're a subscriber to Disney+, Plus. but uh, you were asking me about this film right before all this madness happened. Disney put out Pixar's latest film, Onward, on Disney+, Plus for everybody to watch this past weekend. Ah, and you caught it, huh? Definitely I had to. I mean, it's kind of monumental, because this literally was... In the theaters two or three weeks ago, I think three. Yeah. Right before the theaters closed. Right. Whenever that was. Right. And what did you think? I I thought it was okay. It wasn't uh, their best Pixar film ever. No. Um, Honestly, it was a little sad. It was a little bit more depressing than I thought it was going to be. Oh, God, as if we need any more things to be depressed about. 
Well, it's the the premise of the story, which I don't want to ruin too much, but it's, uh, you know, the the storyline here, according to IMDb, is uh, two elven brothers embark on a quest to bring their father back for one day. Oh, wow. And that's kind of where the depressing side is, is the kid is trying to, you know, meet his father and stuff. And it's like, oh, really? The whole time? And it's just, you feel so bad for, you know, the kid and everything, but was hilarious though there were some really good funny parts like it's uh they have a uh, unicorns in it and they're kind of like javelinas they're getting into the trash and they're more of a nuisance than they are something cool and <laughs> That's it was funny. just uh it was just a unique take on a uh fantasy kind of world it's a it's a buddy travel film you know it's a buddy road trip between two brothers right i like I said, I enjoyed it. I thought it's not Pixar's best film. They definitely have a lot better ones out there. It was fun. It was entertaining. It does pull out the heartstrings, which is a good film. I give it three and a half out of five. Three and a half out of five reels. Okay. You're saying it's a good yeah. way to pass a couple hours. Definitely. Okay. It's, it's a fun watch. Just no going in. It's a little sad. Yeah. All right. Very good. What else did you see? So the next one, and this is what I'm doing for the pod uh, my co-host and I are revisiting lots of films from our youth, okay. and this one is from 1994, and it's called The Stoned Age, and it's basically a coming-of-age story in L.A. at one night, and it's uh, not as much fun as I remember. <laughs> <laughs> no? No? Tough to revisit, huh? Yeah, well, it wasn't, it's not like horrible. I mean, it's, again, it's still because I'm nostalgic, I guess. Yeah. But there's been so many really good coming of age stories since 1994. Sure. Things like Super Bad and Dazed and Confused. And so you see this and you're like, oh, oh, man. <laughs> okay. All right. It has its moments. It's fun at times. It's entertaining at times. It's definitely where I got my love of Blue Oyster Cult. There you go. But uh, <laughs> if if you're not like specific, I, I don't I don't know if I would recommend people to watch it now. But uh, I liked it because I've seen it. I give it three out of five, and three that's probably too high. Okay, all <laughs> right, very good, Matt. So great to hear your voice and uh, your recommendations this morning. Yeah, it's great hearing from you too, Lisa. And I'm glad you're hanging in there, keeping the fort down, and. I'll be back definitely next week with a couple more. i got to figure out what I'm going to do, though. I love it. I'll look forward to it. Thank you, Maddie. Thanks, Lisa. Bye-bye. Bye.